Um, okay, so I just checked the signups and my name is on here for today. So I was like, oh, okay, I thought we were doing a bring your own questions. But um, I did go through the lab, so not the uh, book exercise. I'm sorry, it was a very busy week. Um, so I don't know what you guys want to do. We could go over the lab. It was helpful for me in that um, it sort of went through, you know, how you actually do this without the tidy models. Um, and it just goes through two data sets, either car seeds or I think it's the Boston data set. Um, and just, you know, does classification, examples of regression on them, and then all of the other like ensemble techniques. So seem pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, I, I also just did the lab. I didn't get a chance to do the uh, exercises and yeah. yeah, same thing. Just like it's been a crisis traveling and everything else. I'm surprised I even got through the lab, but it was relatively fast. So, mm -hmm. yes. um, yeah. Yeah, I, I peeked at the conceptual questions, but just kind of ran through some of the code on the lab. Um, right. Okay. Okay. But That's good. It did bring up a question for me, but it wasn't about the code, but just about some of these In techniques. General? But yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Because um, I think that um, what happened was, uh, you know, I made the lecture style slides for the book down, um, but the almost like the lessons that were all, already there were useful in that it is actually like the tidy models um, version of the lab, right? And then it has some embedded videos on either classification or regression or or whatever it is, you know, that that section is addressing. So I left them there and just, you know, labeled that whole thing, like lab portion of it. So that in case, you know, people find it useful. But for me, like the tidy models thing is more confusing than it's helpful um, because I don't necessarily understand like the syntax. And so I just stuck with, you know, like the markdown lab portion that they provided. Um, cool. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, that sounds okay. good. Um, Should we go over some exercises or do you guys want to like ask questions if anything look weird or if you have questions? The main, I didn't really have any questions about the implementation. Um, right. So right. My, the okay. question I could, maybe I could just ask my question. Um, yeah. I don't know. Or go Ron, yeah. Sandra, do you guys want to do the lab, like go over the lab or I don't feel like I need to go over the lab, like uh, the code, but if you guys want to. Um, uh, I don't think so either. I don't need to, um, but I'm happy to, to yeah 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 I, I don't think i need to either um okay. there i think i flagged two questions maybe um so i think, okay. I think the question thing would be better approach yeah, yeah yeah okay okay i had a question too but i can't remember what it was so i will <laughs> maybe it'll come up maybe yeah. it'll come so up so you guys go first for sure <laughs> okay okay i can i can just add, uh do my first then um that's all right so um so basically i was thinking about the algorithms like that they go over for um like let's just take a simple t example of um mm -hmm. of like a single regression tree mm -hmm. um the thing i'm i'm not sure about it, oh sorry i need to let someone in one second uh, five seconds okay i'm back um the thing i'm not sure about is like how how uh so i get the criteria for like what the best splits are and kind of what your what the goal is and kind of what it's optimizing for what i don't get is like let's say you have a thousand variables right. how did it how does it how does it kind of determine which variables to choose to explore splits on like it seems like it would be very inefficient to like it would be too too big of a space to be like for like a thousand continuous variables, like, you know, um, uh, like where's the next split gonna be, right? It could be in one, in a variable you've already split on, it could be in any of the other ones that are there. And I know that for like a random force or something, you're, you're doing a subset of predictors, but like just in the simple case, uh, how does it like optimally, I feel like that was kind of glossed over. I, at least I didn't see it in the chapter. Um, so I don't know if you guys, have a any sense for that but um well, my my understanding was it just tried every variable and then you know 
tried every split, <laughs> every split point. Okay. Which I think so sounds it, hard, but it's a computer. It just has to do a little for loop or something, right? Um, right, right. And it's easier to parallelize, still, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think... Um, so is it really just brute force? Like, yeah. I think it's this uh, top-down uh, greedy approach called recursive binary splitting. Yeah. So they do say that it's computationally infeasible to consider every possible partition, right? Of the feature space into J boxes. And um, can I share my slides? Let me see. Hold on. Yeah. Slides. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. But that's my understanding. Is, yeah. Just you know, finds it doesn't it doesn't try every possible um, division. Just says, okay, what's the first split going to be? And then you know, it may not, the first split, you, the the first split um, that you find maybe the local best, but it may not it may not be the global best. That's this this is uh, what do you call it? The greedy algorithm it uses won't yeah. necessarily find the best possible tree, but it yeah. will find you know this greedy tree, right? But I think uh, yeah, okay. but, go, go, ahead, so, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, you, ask, you raise a good question. Like let's say, okay, let's say I'm considering the variable x, right? And there's like you know, or x sub one, and there's like ten of these, like I said. All right now with x sub one, where do I split it? You know, do I just try from like minus infinity to infinity? That can't work, right? So, how does it actually? Yeah, good question. I guess you obviously wouldn't search from minus infinity to infinity. You search within the the range of the variable actually is realized with, but it's still an open question to me. Like, you know, how that's actually done? Is it like a binary search through the space or what? I don't know. Well, I, I would assume is, some kind. Of but right, but for example, so even if you select a predictor, right, um, and then it says you you select a cut point such that if you split it into two regions, right, it leads yeah. to the greatest possible reduction in RSS, right. But that means that you would have to search for through every predictor in that binary way, right? Yeah. Because how would you know that the one that you selected happens to give the greatest reduction in RSS unless you're comparing to something else that doesn't? Right. No, yeah. I think you try all the variables, but the question is like, how, how does it actually find them? The, even though you're looking at one particular variable, is it differentiable? <laughs> this minimization you're doing is like with respect to. I guess it is, right? Hmm. I mean, that's what I was wondering. I, I, that's just a technicality, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, I that I don't know. Um, I know that when you end up with like the result um, of like, you know, the tree, the best trees like a cross cross validation or um, or like even if you're doing like a random forest, um, like I think those variable importance metrics are looking at like what variables are like split on early you know because like those are the ones that that like are like providing the bit well i don't know if it's i feel like i thought some of them were looking at like which ones are all are very at the very top um because those are like kind of giving you the most bang for your buck early um yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but but also i think it's like some kind of a you know trial and error algorithm with that where it's like if we remove this or or don't split on it uh or like remove it from consideration like how much does it reduce the performance um i think that's also part of it as well but i do think the structure of the tree like yeah. like so like it's in, i think the structure of the tree is like interpreted so i don't know like i um i also i don't know uh sorry i, I lost my train of thought but um <laughs> no problem um but yeah, I don't know. I just like that's fuzzy for me. Um, kind of, and if it is like you know, let's say like it's like you know the splits each time are like, uh, you know, done for every existing variable that's yeah. in the set. Um, I mean, I guess like I don't know how the fir that first split would be done. Um, well, I found a I found a YouTube video which I'm going to post. Which I haven't uh -huh. actually watched, but it looks promising. <laughs> so okay. Maybe, it's only five minutes. Maybe we could watch it later. But yeah. We can watch it. We got plenty of time. Well, we can. Yeah. Do you want to? I'm just skipping through it. See. And it doesn't seem like it's. 
it seems like it's still kind of like hand wavy, um, you know, cartoony, that video. Right. I'm not sure it doesn't do it. I, I was hoping for something with some graphs, not cricket. <laughs> I guess if, we, if you sat down and like wrote down the equation, maybe it'd be obvious what you have to do, but in the top of my head, it's not obvious what you do. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just reading through like a, a stack exchange post. Oh. And one of the answers is um, is what we were saying. The value is used, used for splitting is determined by testing every value for every variable that the mm -hmm. one that which minimizes the sum of squares error is best chosen. Right. But so I'm also I, wondering, yeah. Kevin, so like you're saying, right? Um, I'm imagining like whatever, like the car or Boston data sets where you have like 12, 15 predictors, right? Are trees even useful for things that have thousands? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, does it become um, interpretable? Maybe you use something else? Um, no. I, yeah, I think they are often used okay. in those okay. high dimensional cases. Um, but trees, only, oh yeah, for sure. But the only the only thing is that like, uh, if you care about like, um, so like if there's highly correlated variables or like mm. you and you're doing like a random forest or something mm -hmm. and you care about interpreting like a variable importance output, like mm -hmm. those two correlated variables could like alternate between appearing on the list, like, it just it, yeah. it's kind of because it's kind of random what which ones get chosen for the trees you know what i mean if they're right. highly because they're if they're giving the same information then um so it doesn't like have a problem with it but but an output like variable importance in that case uh i think like you know you can't say oh it you know it chose like um uh this measure of this metric but like didn't choose the other version of it um you know etc because there's some like randomness to it um anyway but mm -hmm. but yeah i think um i mean i think i've also heard people say that it does like a pretty good job of like feature selection like figuring out which ones matter um right. and i think right. it might just take longer you know in the high dimensional case but um but like I think also it does seem like they are like so each of those splits and that kind of process each at each level is going to be they're each independent from each other so if you can like parallel right. you can parallelize it pretty easily because you know they're not you know one split one variable and another one has no, they have no dependence on each other you know so right oh um, right so like you can just do those splits in parallel and different threads or cores or whatever and then and then pull them into one result and then compare them, you know? Um, but anyway, so, and I guess like one, the, it gets easier in some ways once you go down further in the tree, right? Because if you're gonna split on a variable you've already split on a higher above, above, it reduces the space that you have to search, right? Cause like you have everything below on those like child nodes, Mm -hmm. are going to be a subset of the variable that you split on above you know like it has yes, to everyone yes. has to be less than 50 or whatever you know on that variable and if you use it again you're gonna you're gonna split somewhere in that range below or above that cutoff right yeah that, that makes sense yeah yeah but so anyway. good question though yeah <laughs> Yeah, I was just like I was doing some of those practice problems and I it just got me thinking about like now that they've revealed like yeah, I thought it was a pretty good description of the algorithms um and also your presentation last week. But the um I don't know, that was like the open question for me. I was like, oh wait, but this part seems like magic. Like how does it get to you know the right variable to split on? Um you know, that's like a theme right, in this right. book, I th I think, right? A lot of things they do in this book are they're not going to, they don't go into the details of the algorithm. They kind of give you the flavor of it. And that's about it. Like, I mean, the, you know, Bart, forget about that. Right. They don't tell you anything about how that, how that's done. So. Right. Mm -hmm. There's like, Oh, they take a random perturbation of the tree somehow. Don't worry about it. <laughs> right. Don't worry about that. Yeah. I mean, I wonder though, if it, like there has to be some kind of implementation of this where it, it does some sort of smart searching of the space, right? Like, like let's say like mm -hmm. it tries like 
you know, 90 on this certain variable, and then it gets a, a, a output, it reduces by, you know, 10 points or whatever, and then it tries it on 20, and it reduces by 100 points, and then it goes to 25, and then, you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, like, it, I think it's some kind of feel like it yeah. should like hone in on the yeah there's the, there's all kinds of optimization algorithms Newton's right. method and all kind I mean there's I'm sure he mm -hmm. doesn't just like go with like a for loop through the yeah it goes <laughs> just like a random zero to, zero to 50 by 0.1 or something right he'll try all these variables right. and pick the smallest one that that would be a, a very inefficient way of doing it yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay so at the very least maybe even if it's trying every variable there's probably some kind of optimization yeah. like that happening in each at, for each one. Yeah, absolutely. Mm, okay. All right. Maybe I need to look that up then and see what that what those implementations are uh, in some of these like. Uh, yeah, it might be in the ES um, essentials of yes, the essentials of statistical mm -hmm. learning book mm -hmm. maybe a place to learn. Mm -hmm. Well, I am not. I'm just suggesting. That's good. Um, Sandra, you said you had some questions that came up. Maybe if you want to go to those. Yeah, let me, I'm, I'm looking for it, sorry. Uh... Okay, I guess um, I found one of them. So in the section on boosting, right? Uh, chunk 25 in the lab, if you guys have it. Um, they're just fitting, uh, you know, boosted regression tree again to the Boston data set. Um, and then they get, you know, their result. And then some of the output is, let's see where that is. Wait, where did it go? You want to share your screen? So uh, I'm actually- Yeah, 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 sorry. Instead of being here yeah, cryptic. I'm, I'm on the wrong computer anyway, so. Let me just close this. Okay, so here. Um, so they fit this uh, boosted regression tree to the Boston data set, right? They're getting uh, the summary and what uh, predictors are important. So it's usually rooms and then LSTAT, right? And then they say um, LSTAT and RM are by far, far the most important variables, right? We can also produce partial dependence plot, which I think is what we saw that other time, right? When you hold everything else constant. Um, and so it says the plots illustrate the marginal effect of the selected variables on the response after integrating out the other variables, right? So in this case, as we might expect, median house prices are increasing with number of rooms and decreasing with this uh, low socioeconomic status percent of the population. So my question is, and this is sort of a tangential question, but in this case, they're integrating out versus holding constant because we're talking about like areas of predictor space. When they say integrating out, uh, do they really, do they mean like in like, uh, like calculus or are they that's what I don't uh, understand. Yeah, that's what, do you mean by that? what I assumed, but then I also don't uh, know because I'm I'm just making an analogy to you know the 
the holding other variables constant, which in a linear uh -huh. regression, like simple linear regression, right? Or multivariate was just subtracting out the contribution, right? And then you could plot these like partial plots. So in this yeah. case, they're like integrating on it. And I'm like, hey, why not holding out? Like why integrating out? Well, hold it. So only... Integrating, make, I mean, if this was like a few dimensional probability yeah. distribution, like X and Y, and I want to know like what's the marginal dependence on x I would have to integrate out y because I don't know I don't care about a particular y I just want to know for on the average y what is what is x like right so um huh. so you integrate in that case I'm not sure how that applies here in this tree like how do you integrate the tree I don't know I mean it's right I haven't, I haven't actually given any thought maybe it becomes clear if you write something out but um I did, to be honest, when I read this part, I'm like, well, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> if I ever have to do that, I'll try to figure it out. Right now, I'm not gonna worry about it. But. Okay, I guess my question was just like, cause it gets thrown in there, you know? And I'm like, was I supposed to understand this? <laughs> or like- I know, they never mentioned like that before. Missing right? something big, yeah. Okay. And, you, and you're just talking about the language, right? Like the, that, that description yeah. of it integrating? Yeah. Yes, well, what exactly. Is, what are they actually doing? What are they doing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, okay. I mean, I guess one way you could do it is by, um, let's say, for every other variable, you would, um, yeah, I'm not sure what you do. I'm trying to think, would you, would you sum up the probability of being in that particular class, that region, the fraction are in that region times the value, and then get the expectation value, and then I don't know what that means. I just can't think of it. Okay, maybe let's just ignore that since they don't really explain anything about it um, and just say, okay, well, that's how it works. Yeah, yeah good okay. question. I mean, good call out. I just, uh, I don't, I, I have the same boat as you. <laughs> okay. Let me uh, see if I had uh, another question. No, it seems like it was fairly um, straightforward, at least the lab. I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to look at the actual exercises. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, I think we're all pretty busy. Um, I did think of another question that's like, a, that also came up for me. It's like another one mm -hmm. of those algorithm detail questions. Um, but um, uh, if you don't have anything else, I can uh, ask it, Sandra. Yeah, Do, do you have it. anything yeah. else? Okay. No. I'm so, good. so, um, so what I was thinking about was with Bart with this Bayesian additive regression trees. Um, I was curious about like the how that perturbance actually happens. Like, is it perturbing? Mm -hmm. Is it perturbing like in terms of selecting other variables as well, like in the splits, or is it just like perturbing the thresholds? You know. Like, I, I'm just curious, like, and maybe we just need to look into, I need just to just look into the algorithm details a little more, but. Um, no, it's both, definitely both. It's, you know, adding new splits, with new variables and, and changing split points. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's kind of, that, that part I did get, but I don't know how it actually, what's, how it creates a set of candidates for these and how it selects from that set is not clear. Yeah, yeah. that's good understatement. It's I have no idea. It's better better way to say that. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. when I say I, I'm not clear on that, I mean I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a judicious way. Yeah. Of, uh, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. I thought I thought that method was super interesting. Also, partially because like I've heard people use it, but I never really knew how it worked, even at a, even at like a high level. Um, mm. Like that. Um, the place Probably. I first heard it was uh, uh, in the Big Data Bowl, the NFL Big Data Bowl a few years ago. The first one, I think. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but yeah. the team that uh, won uh, was some people who are R people in R, the R for data science community. Actually, oh um, wow! Oh, they okay. they used they used a BART model um for mm -hmm. this predicting like i forget what it was it was about defense it was like predicting like um i forget i think it was like a, or like evaluating uh oh like, you uh, football. football we said yeah, NFL, yeah. You know, football, NFL. Not, it was yeah i assumed it was something like national forensics oh no no no, no. <laughs> no it was that it was nfl big day it's a cool competition um but i have that's where i heard about the background so 
there was something with like evaluating <laughs> defensive player like performance or like range or like who should would get to like what ball or something something in that realm oh, but um i need to okay. look at it again but anyway that's where i first heard about it and like i never really read up on it after that and had meant to so um anyway i was so i was like focusing on that section a little bit more i think um so yeah and i until i watched the video last week i didn't quite get the the bayesian part until ron your question was basically like is this this uh um was it markovian monte carlo uh Marco algorithm Marco, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and um and uh and it seems like it is right so i guess that the bayesian connection makes sense um from that that perspective but um from the books i, I just first posted. reading i didn't get it no. yeah i posted a journal article on it from mccullough and chipman and george i guess so uh i don't know who chipman and george are but mccullough is familiar to me so it's a the annals of applied statistics. I don't know if that's the original. It looks like if we develop a Bayesian sum of trees model, each tree is concerned. It looks like it might yeah. be the original article and from 2010. So it's not like this is, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like when around. you when you write a paper that's just the out the the acronym and then what the acronym means and it's like yeah. a model, it's usually it's like the one that they that did it, you know. Yeah, it must um, be. But, so that might be well, I found a 2008 article that wasn't I mean uh, you know okay. people write multiple same guys some people know they write multiple articles on them like oh yeah. here's the get that h index so yeah oh it's the same paper as this this the the archive version of it before they got it published oh I so. see and this one you shared I think it's open source I just downloaded it cool yeah uh, or source. like freely available yeah yeah well it's it's also available in the archive thing too. okay cool I might read through this just to um I know how hard how, how dense it is but yeah I'm curious pages. too yeah. 20, a little under 30 pages. Cool. Hmm. Interesting. It's a weak learner. <laughs> weak <laughs> learner, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, do we have any other questions or topics? I do want to follow up on that, like the question I had to see if I could find out more about those optimization algorithms I can share on the Slack if I find anything. Cool. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. I have no more questions on this. Um, okay. Me either. I couldn't find what my question was. So mm. uh, uh, to be honest, I, I kind of felt the tree stuff doesn't really apply to things I'm doing currently. So I, I'm kind of mm -hmm. happy just to get a high level view of it right now. Because I do remember, Ron, I think at the beginning, I think it was you said that you were most interested in this chapter, like the first, the first meeting you had. I'm pretty sure. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> you did. Well, I was wrong. I'm no longer that interested. In it. <laughs> now that you know. <laughs> now that I know what it is. I, well, the reason why I think I said that in the same thing for the next chapter, these are two things I've never even touched before mm. the trees and the mm -hmm. support vector machines i know a lot of people know about support vector machines but i've never used them so that's why i'm interested but now that i now that the curtain's been pulled away i'm like eh. <laughs> <laughs> meh <laughs> yeah so, yeah i mean um i know that like the boosted boosted trees are uh performance wise a lot of the time like for tabular data or outperform deep deep like neural nets um in many yeah. cases for, for tabular what, data. So like for a ta data? table, like table, like just like rows and columns, like um, like 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 not like images basically. Um oh, 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 oh. okay. So not oh. like like yeah, like a, a representation of pixels and stuff, like um just like you know, observations with attributes, uh mm -hmm. in like a row and column format. Okay. Um yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. I would say the thing I found most interesting in the chapter was that the uh, bagging concept I thought was pretty cool because it can be applied to other things besides trees too. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For for estimating uh, out of sample error, I thought it was more for reducing variance. I think it's for reducing it? variance. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I need to reread re that part. Then. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, and the cool thing too is that like for the simpler, I guess for even for like a random forest, there's like some pretty, um, like you can select like a subset of trees or something and get like a really interpretable. That's cool. Result. That is cool. Actually, result. That part I do you think is good? Mm -hmm. You can, yeah, you can like, you know, put that on a wall. So here's how we decide to these, make these decisions. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like anyone can look at that and they're like, yeah. okay, I get that. Um, yeah. But it is a little bit harder to do that when you have like 5,000 trees, you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And like how, you know, which ones do you choose? How do you summarize across all those trees? They may be very different splits. Like, um, you can do like variable importance and stuff like that, but you can also do that with a super black box model, you know, um, so. Yeah. yeah. I think also it's like when you're trying to like sell someone on a, on like a analysis and mm -hmm. they don't, they don't like, it's also like easier to explain. I feel like, um, yeah. you know, how it, how it, how the internals of it work. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That does make yeah. sense. One of my favorite um, uh, uh, anomaly detection techniques is a oh. is a isolation forest. Have you guys heard of this? Um, mm -mm. It's basically like the same thing as a decision tree, except it it's trying to um, so it just like goes until it does all the the same kind of um, binary like splitting, and mm -hmm. until every single point is isolated or you get. Um, it's on its own or you get to like a maximum depth and then the anomaly score is just done by how high it is up in the tree so like if it gets isolated on average in like one split then mm -hmm. then it's like very different than everything else um but it, oh. and it's but then so it kind of like looks at the tree in reverse and it's like yeah. it scores it by how mm -hmm. high it is on average or where how far you have to get down the tree to get it by itself um and I love it. It's it really. I found it works really well. And um, and um, again, like kind of easy, easier to explain. Um, you know, and it's like non-parametric. It doesn't make any assumptions about the distribution of the, you know, variables. And it works in like these, like a high-dimensional, you know, situation. You get a single like score based on you know the depth, the, the depth of the observation in the tree. Um, right, 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 right. Okay, let me see if I'm understanding this properly. So mm -hmm. that would tell you, like you're saying, uh, something akin to variable importance, right? So if it gets separated, for example, like very early on, and either like top or a few topmost splits. Mm -hmm. But it's so about... Is it, is it sort of like variable selection in that way or no? So... I guess it's similar to like so you're looking at in both cases you're looking at like splits and, and kind of characteristics of those splits but in this case it's at like the observation level so you're not looking at you're not trying to get a score about variables you're trying to get a score about individual points um, oh okay okay so that's what I was, so would would then would it tell you about outliers then or exactly yeah exactly for not Got like it. anomalies okay. yeah exactly so okay so basically like this is just like the tree right so like if if you do uh, oh, one okay, okay. if you do one split every point yes. these points up here if they're isolated already they're probably very different than everything else um and like so the the it's, huh. it's shooting okay. it's shooting for isolation instead of explanation you know yeah like yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, trying yeah. to um well i guess it's a similar process um cuz if you do isolate each point then it gets like pretty easy to predict it but it would be like super overfit if you did that but anyway if you're right. trying to predict something right, right, right. but but anyway oh, okay, but okay. but so yeah so if they're high up in the tree they get a higher anomaly score and lower down they get a lower score mm -hmm. and then you can see it here so like uh and this is just the two-dimensional case but um uh sorry let me just get the bigger version of this Let's see if i can zoom in so like here like if you do this first split here right mm -hmm. um then you get these points on this uh, half these points on this half and then let's say like this is your second split mm -hmm. this point is all by itself now yeah. uh in this in this box um and it 
it was isolated pretty early on, or let's say even it was like the fourth split. If you did this, this, and this, um, you know, uh, yeah, it's 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 weird. It's on its own, and um, it get, it'll get a higher higher score than everything else. Mm -hmm. um, so interesting. Okay. And then it, and then I think it it'll you know it does a bunch of trees, and then it'll average for each observation across. All those trees right, 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 right like how 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 many splits it took to isolate it and then it kind of normalized so then you get like a a score that's usually you know between zero and one sometimes it's higher but um um but yeah so i think it's super cool i i um i use it for a lot of different scenarios um, yeah what do you use it for like, give me an, an example. Yeah, I mean, um, so like, uh, like we, um, like I look at like, uh, like server data a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, or even let's say just like a user session. Um, and those sessions have a bunch of different characteristics like um, latency, like, uh characteristics about the users themselves um so categorical stuff so you can like one hot encode it you know and then include those as well um and uh and and yeah and like i want to find the oddest sessions for instance mm -hmm. um like that are uh but but considering every attribute right like that i right. think is important right. um and um, and then I just like run a script every day and say, you know, if, uh, do a subsample, a sample of, of the total sessions for each day. Mm -hmm. And then based on that sample, run this isolation forced algorithm and then show me any sessions that, uh, that had a score above 0. 0.8, for instance. Right. Um, and then those are the ones, um, yeah. And then those are the ones you can look at and you know, understand kind of what's happening and et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. um, but I have found that like, I need to do a lot of some cases a little bit more than just like the raw data because um, if there's a, a class or like a, a observation that's just like in more infrequent, um, mm -hmm. but it's like a legitimate, like, it's not really an anomaly, but it's an anomaly compared to the majority use case. Um, then, then it's going to come up like every time. Um, so either like reducing the data for like the population you care about, or, um, you know, doing something to normalize it or whatever, to like reduce the oddness of those, those kind of edge case like applications that you don't, you might not care as much about, you know, for um, right. identifying, identifying problems. Yeah. In my case, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. our case, like we want the system to be reliable. So like um, often times, like if, if there's like a single session that like is doing something very bad or very odd or has a lot of mm -hmm. errors or something, mm -hmm. um, like it could be a sign that like something is changing or, you know, it could, start so like we really care about like the margins and try to understand kind of like what the logic is for like how performance is degrading there right you know? um right. so anyway so i just like want an easy way to find those sessions on a regular basis and kind of have the choice to like look at them based on this mm -hmm. characteristic so that's mm -hmm. what i use it for but i just like that you can just like you know with minimal pre-processing just like throw in you know 15 dimensions and you get a single score of of how how odd or like it is to, for you know for the rest of the sample from the rest of the sample um, right 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 huh so but that's cool yeah so um so it's cool i just thought to bring it up because it's like a tree-based method but it's mm -hmm. kind of like flipping the tree and looking at it in a kind of a different way um, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, all I have. Okay, well, I don't have anything else either. Cool. Um, all right, well, um, next week, 
I'm signed up for support vector machines. Uh, that okay. should still be should still be good. Um, and then we'll just do the same kind of open questions the week after. And then um, Sham is signed up for the the sec October second, which is the the one after that. Mm -hmm. I'll connect with him just to see if he's able to do that because you know I don't think he's been able to attend recently. So um, right. And then we don't have anyone yet for survival analysis. I see Sandra, you signed up for the last two chapters, which is awesome. Um, so either, well, you know, either me or Ron, I guess, uh, will yeah. do the <laughs> survival analysis. Um, I'll probably maybe I can do it. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. okay go ahead. Or you can, yeah. yeah, I'm just busy with my class, so I have to figure um, out. Um, we'll just play it by year when you're closer. If one okay. of us can do it for sure. I mean, it's still a month over a month away, yeah, the 16th worried. of October. Although it is my birthday on the 21st, so I don't know. Oh, really? Impact anything. Oh. It's of October, of October. Yeah. My birthday is the um, 25th, so we're like really close. <laughs> oh, nice. Of October. Okay. Huh? Yeah, how weird. Yeah. Funny. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, so that's a month away, so we don't have to worry about it as much. But um, but yeah, we're getting to some, at least the, so a lot of this stuff, like you were saying around in the end of the book, I'm a very, much less experience or exposure to so yeah um, sv support vector machines i like did a boot camp where i had to do some of that but i really i haven't used it in practice at all um mm -hmm. and deep learning again in that like boot camp thing i did we did a few weeks on it but uh i don't know a ton about it. and then survival analysis and sensor data like would, it's going to be really interesting i think like mm -hmm. survival analysis especially um but i think that comes up a lot in like business context like you want to know who's gonna who's not gonna subscribe again to something you know oh, like interesting um yeah. so like surviving is like are they going to stay as a customer um and right. that that is like very broadly applicable so. yeah that seems, seems like a cool tool set yeah that is interesting to me so i'm you know i may if i can i definitely want to cover it um, if I'm available. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, well, like you said, we'll Sounds play it good. by ear. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, All right. Yeah, this is a fun conversation. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Yeah. Yeah. See you next time. Always fun. All, All right. right. Bye. 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 Have a good week. Bye.